Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hot Mike Show. I'm Bill Whittle from Los Angeles. And today our topic is we've been bushwicked. Bushwicked, you ask? What is that? Well, it's a movie called Bushwick. Haven't heard of it? No, me neither. Uh, but it's something we want to keep an eye on because uh, today's theme is going to be how we've become the villains in our own mythology. How basically middle America and American values are now the villains in our own movies. It's not that, the, that we're villains in Chinese movies or or, or Arab movies. We're, we're the villains in our own in our own movies. So I'm going to play a trailer for you from Bushwick in, in a second here, and it's about two minutes. I wouldn't put you through all of that, honestly, except I'm going to just go along, give you a running narration and, and show you some things that, you know, my show business eyes that have been burned out by a Hollywood may be able to see. So um, basically the idea is that a group of Texans go to New York and take over New York City. Something like that. Let's roll the clip here. Okay. Well, so far so good. Got a woman holding a gun, XYZ Films. A neighborhood in Brooklyn. Now, look at that. You know what's expensive? You know what costs money in movies? Extras. That's what costs money. Extras. When you see people in New York City and there's nothing here, you know that you got a cheap movie here. Uh, still haven't seen anything that costs more than 100 bucks here. Lots of close-ups and dark rooms and menacing uh, this and that. And, oh, there's some guys shooting some things. And again, another dark room with two actors. And here's an aerial shot that was superimposed from a drone shot. There's another drone shot. Uh, yeah, it's entered at those two things. Here's some more little action with one or two people in a small room. Oh, she's terrified. There goes the flare. Oh, my God, the excitement builds and builds and builds. We can't take it anymore. A plot flies as fast as the bullets. Yeah, which means it's indistinguishable. Greek tyrant had something nice to say. Geek tyrant. Uh, you know, and if you have to go to Geek Tyrant for your best headline, you, you got a pretty good idea of the movie. Look at all the empty streets. This is New York and there's nobody there. And the reason there's nobody there is because extras cost money. Uh, here's some more nefarious things going on on the part of those rascally Texans who are apparently trying to take over the Bushwick neighborhood of uh, New York City. Ooh, gunfight with two people. Another shadowy outline. There's seven. That must have cost them a fortune. I, and it's the producers of The Raid. I wish they told me that from the beginning. Um, I have no idea what The Raid is. Uh, and again, oh, hey, look at that. A guy with a baseball bat took out a, a, an armed um, soldier with a, with, a, with a rifle. Never lets up. They don't tell you what never lets up. Is it the boredom? Is it the boredom that never lets up? Anyway, there they are looking at some uh, some superimposed smoke, and there's another person and some more people, and and, and at least you know here's the thing, this is um this is a gigantic uh, liberal um, you know kind of well let's, you know, let's just call it what it is it's it's basically liberal porn, uh, you get to shoot at Texans because Texans have come to take over, uh, New York City, makes as much sense as zombies, to me, but. I'll tell you why it's important. Now, Bush, Bushwick is, is a joke. By the way, uh, at the trailer I saw, the number one comment, the top comment, uh, which I grabbed a picture of, says, uh, what does it say, uh, total budget, $10. Yep, <laughs> LOL. Yeah, it looked like they made, made the movie for $10. So why is this important? Well, it's important because it's indicative of a, of a larger trend among more serious movies, and we can just take a quick look at them. Um, I've mentioned this before. If you want to realize how much Hollywood has changed over the last uh, 30 or 40 years, in 19, was it 62, they made a film called The Manchurian Candidate, and it was starring Frank Sinatra about a uh, U.S. soldier who'd been brainwashed by the Chinese, and Frank Sinatra's tracking him down. Turns out he's been brainwashed to kill the president. That's The Manchurian Candidate, 1962. In uh, 2004, they made the exact same movie, this time with Denzel Washington, exact same movie essentially uh, a serviceman's been brainwashed to kill the president only this time it's not the red chinese it's the manchurian corporation did you get that it's uh, the manchurian corporation it's a corporation in other words it's us it's business people it's republicans essentially the manchurian corporation good lord uh you get movies like um syriana uh, which uh, show the noble um, Arab uh, prince who wants nothing but the best for his people, set against a background of venal and uh, cheating uh, American oil executives. I'm pretty sure it's this movie where they have um, a line that says, chaos is good for business. 
And I remember seeing this in a, in, uh, in a clip and I thought, what kind of business have you ever run in your life, you miserable screenwriter? Has there ever been a businessman who ever said that chaos is good for business? That's a ridiculous thing to say. Businessmen need order. They need predictability. So there's these kind of, uh, of things. There's uh, Redacted, which was uh, a particularly loathsome film, uh, basically pointing out that American soldiers are nothing but murderers and psychopaths just going in there killing people. Uh, you know, hither and yon, and, and that was a, a vile, vile piece of work that I think made $25,000 domestically. Um, and we have, uh, you know, a couple of other things. We have, you know what, we're going to go to our guests, and we come back, we're going to go back and set up a little bit of this. Um, but we have our friend Jeremy Boring is back with us from uh, Daily Wire. Uh, Jeremy is also from a small town in Texas, which I've been to. Hey, buddy, uh, this um, Bushwick movie talks about the takeover of New York City by a small group of Texans, and they talk about it like it's a bad thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I watched the trailer of the film in, in anticipation of uh, our conversation today, and part of what struck me was uh, why on earth would anyone invade Brooklyn? Uh, if, what's the strategic advantage to the state of Texas of taking a hipster, uh, recently gentrified uh, borough of New York City? It makes no sense to me, but you know, what it's, do I know? It's about the oil, Jeremy. They're, they're invading, you, you must know this by now, uh, Tex, Texaners, uh, Texans, Southerners, conservatives, and businessmen, everything we do, ever, what wars, movement, trans, anything, pipelines, it's all about the oil. So the obviously oil. they're leaving Texas to go and get the oil up in, um, up in Bushwick. Uh, we talked about <laughs> before, and, and we may talk about a little later on, the idea of the anti-hero, that Hollywood was making such yeah. you know, appalling movies back in the late 60s, they're painting, you know, paint your wagon and seven brides for seven brothers, these these kind of things. And and they were so boring that along comes a film like um, Easy Rider or Bonnie and Clyde, where you can see there's there's um, there's what they were manufacturing. That is, in fact, Clint Eastwood. I think that's paint your wagon. And and so anyway, they're, they're manufacturing this this boring dreck. And along comes films like Easy Rider and Bonnie and Clyde and they feature the anti-hero. And here's a question I have for you, Jeremy. If, if it turns out that the movie world has, um, has got anti-heroes, then does that mean also that fighting them, you have to have an anti-villain? In other words, if what was formerly the hero is now kind of a villain, does that mean that former villains are now heroes? Uh, that would in actually other, require words, some sort of logic in other and words, sense. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Have we become I'm, I'm the tracking, villains in I'm our tracking, own and, and listen, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what this movie Bushwick is about, right? I mean, uh, the traditional good guys are the bad guys. You know, the uh, Texas, which is, you know, if anything, sort of the center of what's left of the values of the country, uh, are now the thing that, you know, listen, all of this aside, the real problem with a film like Bushwick is that it inverts reality. Uh, this is a point that our friend, well, my That's friend it. and your arch nemesis, Andrew Clavin, often makes, which is that in order for uh, the left to make the films that they make, they have to not only call uh, evil good, but they have to call good evil. So you take a film like Avatar, right? And Avatar is all about sort of the, you know, the, the white man coming into this very serene, natural uh, environment and, and bringing his values, which are war and destruction. But of course, that's an inversion of reality because anywhere where there's been pre-civilizational men, he has been uh, a savage. He's been ruthless and, and uh, thieving and murdering. And it's actually, if anything, it's the, the colonizer who brings values uh, and who brings civilization, and who brings medicine, and who brings culture. So the only way that you can make a film like that work is if you actually invert what is true uh, and frame, you have to frame what is not as though it were. Avatar is a great example if you think about it because in James Cameron's ideal utopian world, sentient beings are able to uh, love and they are able to fly and they are able to uh, have low infant mortality rates and they have all of that. Well, we have all of that too. We live in a magical world where man can fly and where man, but we do it because of the unobtainium. We do it because of the oil. We do it because of the progress. That's what actually made it possible for us to have all the things that he idolizes. What he's really saying is, wouldn't it be amazing if we could have all of the all of the advancement and wonder and awe of modernity 
uh, without any of the actual process or values or systems that it took in order for us to have it. So he created a false world. If he had shown the, the creatures out on Pandora uh, in, their, in the state of actual pre-civilizational beings, you know, covered in dirt and watching their children die of disease and starvation, then we might not necessarily root against the, uh, the spaceman coming down to town to get some of that delicious oil. You know, that's, that's really beautifully said. Um, what he's basically doing, and people, you know, there were cases of suicide when people realized that they couldn't be, you know, um, in, in the Avatar world because the Avatar world's so beautiful. And you know, Jeremy, right. the thing about the people in Avatar is that they're so authentic. You know, they're so authentic. And, and what strikes me is yeah. how little people follow this through. What do they do for entertainment in, in this wonderful community? They sit around a campfire at night and they wrap their arms around each other and they sing and they chant. You know, I got to tell you, one right. of my favorite uh, things about Mark Twain was he spent a fair amount of time saying, if heaven is the way it's been described to me, then it's going to be appalling. The idea of sitting on a cloud playing a harp may sound nice for, you know, 20 minutes, but if you're going to be doing that for eternity, that's not what people are built yeah. for. And James Cameron and all the rest of these progressives can go down to the Amazon at any time and go live among native people and get all the authenticity that they don't have in this world, but they don't do it, do they? That's right. Well, and in the film Bushwick, right, the whole premise is that the racists, white supremacists down in Texas uh, want to come up and I guess just randomly kill people in a random uh, borough of New York, again, a place that provides no military uh, no strategic military purpose. And from what I can tell from the trailer and the various reviews, they're just shooting random civilians because that's a successful way to lead an occupation. Uh, but even that's an inversion of reality, right? Because uh, Texas and, and the South writ large uh, are actually much more integrated than most big Democrat controlled cities like New York. I mean, if you read the real stories of what's going on in Bushwick right now, it's all about the sort of racial tensions uh, through because as a resulting from gentrification and the, the taking over of traditional black neighborhoods uh, by um, more prosperous uh, white New Yorkers. Uh, so the reality is, of course, then that the racists are already in Bushwick, and it's the uh, more advanced, civilized, uh, multi, uh, not multicultural, but multi-ethnic Southerners who are coming up here. To, again, they have to completely invert reality in order to paint uh, with such a broad brush Southern American Christians as being racists and bigots and warmongers and murderers. Yeah. By the way, where do you think that, where do you think the murder rate is higher today? Texas or uh, New York City? Yeah, and as far as the racism goes, this um, Hurricane Harvey's been a, been a pretty much a catastrophe for the left. You know, all of these people of different yeah. races rescuing each other and smiling and helping each other aboard, and and one person's carrying another one out of the out of the water. It's almost like they're individuals who don't care about race or any of this other stuff we're told we're supposed to care about, or class, or sexual orientation, or anything. Turns out that Hurricane Harvey shows us that these are individual people who are decent, good people, and they're not sitting there doing the, the Nazi salute and letting certain people drown and, and rescuing certain others. It's, it's very destructive for them, this, this narrative of, um, of well, Hurricane Harvey. Reality uh, by the way, is very by, by the way, you'll be pleased left, to know, right? That's why they have to make movies. That, that's, that's right. You'll be pleased to know, by the way, that it's not just it's not Texas even that's invading Bushwick. There's a there's a one quick line in a, in the trailer, a different trailer, where there's somebody lying on the ground and one of these guys from Texas points his gun down at him and he goes, all right, all right. <laughs> so it's actually Matthew McConaughey taking over New York. And the thing that's really I've hilarious about that it. is it wouldn't. It would never take, you, you probably could do it with five or six people, right? I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be that tough. We probably could take California with 15 Texans if, you know, if we really wanted to. Um, I'm interested in, um, on this idea that you have to, the left has to, they have to delegitimize everything. They have to delegitimize the culture. They have to delegitimize the civilization. They have to show it as awful, terrible, nasty. And the reason, Jeremy, is, because if things are not awful and terrible and nasty, why do we need the left? If, if America is a fundamentally good place, then why do we need to fundamentally transform it? The left requires a self-hatred in yeah, order for people to buy their program of, of radical change to, um, to, be, to Marxism. Yeah, you actually have to be uh, a 
frightened savage sitting around the campfire, not knowing what's lurking out there in the dark to want big government to come keep you safe and tell you what you can and can't do, right? Uh, again, I, I, I realize we're sort of picking on this one movie that neither of us has or will ever see. I think the movie Bushwick, mm -hmm. uh, even in limited release, is single-handedly responsible for the complete collapse of the summer box office uh, and the collapse of the stocks <laughs> of all the major movie chains, which is a big news story right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're, they're framing reality through a lens that's meant to invert its moral values so that, I mean, listen, of course, there's sort of a uh, secessionist porn on the right. There's a sort of uh, apocalyptic millennialist streak on the right where we like to think about what if the zombie apocalypse came and then we'd have the opportunity to be real men and pick up baseball bats with, uh, you know, with barbed wire around them and go kill uh, the walking dead. But uh, the reality is that if there were ever to be a division of the states in this country, it wouldn't be over issues like race, as Bushwick is trying to present it. And it wouldn't even be over oil, which is, the, as you say, the boogeyman of, of the left. It would be over freedom. It would be over the fact that people, people in Texas don't want to come up and kill New Yorkers. People in Texas want to almost never think about New Yorkers at all. They want to be left alone to pursue their <laughs> life uh, as free men and women. <laughs> Yeah. And it's only people sitting up in these so, urban uh, liberal. That's right. It's actually the urban liberals who want to come down to Texas and tell them how they have to live their life, not the other way around. That's right. And and once again, we come back to the same point that we've hit on so many times, and that is you have to accuse uh, Texans and Southerners and conservatives of racism, because if you don't do that, people are gonna start looking at democratically controlled places like Detroit and Baltimore and St. Louis and um, right. Newark. These murder pits that, that look like bombed out cities have been run by Democrats uninterrupted with a, not a single Republican mayor or city council for 50, 60, 70, 80 years. And you sure don't want people looking yeah. around saying, wait a minute, we've been voting Democrat for, for four generations now and life is getting worse and worse and worse. So we have to scare people, and that means we need a boogeyman, and that means guess who? The entire purpose of a horror film is to make you, sitting in a completely safe and controlled environment, feel the emotions that you would feel if you were in fact in a place that was the opposite of that, that was hostile and frightening. And, uh, and that's what this film and all the other films of its type are trying to do. The left uh, has to say that what is isn't. They have to say that uh, this is how you wind up with the party of the Ku Klux Klan, segregation, and the Confederacy, calling the party of emancipation and Lincoln uh, racist and bigots. It's how you wind up with the party that wants to take all of your money, calling you greedy. It's how you wind up with the party uh, that ha whose ideology played out to its extreme, killed 100 million people in the 20th century, saying that we're warmongers who want to tell other people how they have to live their life. They use media to do this because media, uh, not, not just news media, but they use the entertainment media because the purpose of entertainment media is to uh, prom promulgate fiction. And their worldview is based on the greatest fiction uh, of, of them all. The idea that you need them because you're bad without them, when in fact you're just fine without them and they're bad. Well, I know you gotta go, pal. So I would just say when you do go back to Texas, please, beg the Texans that you see, beg them not to make this big invasion of New York City that they've been planning for so long. Beg them, beg them not, please, please don't leave your beautiful houses and go and invade Brooklyn. Please, you gotta stop it, Jeremy, we're counting on you. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today, pal. It's always a pleasure best. talking to you. It was a great insight. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks for having me. When we come back from the break, um, we are going to talk about some of the things that Jeremy just mentioned, uh, the historical idea of images and the power of images in movies to form narratives that end up costing millions of people their lives. We'll be back in just a few moments. I'm Bill Whittle here on the Hot Mike Show on NRA TV. It's hard to believe, but this year marks the sixth season of The Noir Show. I've had a hell of a good time trying to put together the best take on gun culture I possibly can. And one of the best parts has been interacting with you, the fans. One thing you've said from the very beginning is we want more noir. Well, me too. So this year I'm doing things a little different. We're gonna wait until the fall to give you finished, polished, shiny new episodes. Nope, this year we're gonna release content while we're still in production. So some of these videos are going to make it into the final episodes this fall. Others are only going to be standalone. 
Either way, my goal is to give you exactly what you want. More noir. So look forward to all sorts of new content from The Noir Show for the rest of the year. And I hope you enjoy. I mean, if you were to Google him, you know, all of these things come up. It's Rich Froning. He's a Reebok athlete. He's the four-time fittest man on earth. He's the two-time affiliate cup champion. But if you're from Cookville, you just know Rich is a good guy. I can't speak more highly of Rich Froning, just simply because of his heart, of his humanity for people who are hurting. That kind of love and support uh, that you see in his heart and life, it just rubs off on you as just being around him. Four years ago, we had our first you know, Rich Froning's Mayhem for Mustard Seed, and you know, this year we had our, our fourth event that raised you know, over $200,000 towards the kids at Mustard Seed Ranch. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Hot Mike Show. I'm Bill Little uh, coming to you from Los Angeles. And now for the sort of the big point. We were talking before the break about a laughably uh, low budget movie called um, Bushwick and, and, and undoubtedly they're very, very grateful to the uh, NRA for, for promoting them more than they ever would have, I think, otherwise. But it's about conservatives taking over a, a, uh, a suburb of New York and running around shooting and killing people so they get to shoot at conservatives and Texans. And we've been talking about how we've become the villains in our own mythology. That businessmen and military people and police and all of us are no longer the good guys, they're the bad guys now. Consistently the bad guys. If you have an anti-hero, you have to have an anti-villain. And that's what they've done. And as our friend Jeremy just said, they've inverted everything. Morality, logic, reason, ethics, all of it. It's upside down. So what's the point? Does this really matter or is this just a, you know, a, a, a storm in a teacup, a tempest in a teacup? Um, here's the problem. When you don't have images, your perception of things is completely different. So let's take a look at a, a picture that we showed just a couple days ago. Uh, it's an appalling uh, picture, but there it is. That's an actual picture of a gas chamber. Um, and this, we look at this picture and we think of, of the Nazis and what they did. Let's look at the next picture. There's a pile of emaciated bodies. And let's look at the next one, please. There's people basically starving to death in a barracks. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Picture number one was from Auschwitz, was an actual picture of Nazi um, death camps. But the pile of bodies and the people in this picture are not from Nazi Germany. They're from Soviet Russia. They're from the Gulag. And the Nazis killed six million Jews and probably another six million people in these extermination camps. But, but the Soviets executed and worked to death probably when you get to the people, they starve 30 million, 40 million. It's not like a contest. I'm not trying to say they win because they had more victims, but what I'm trying to say is this. When people talk about Nazis, you feel a revulsion inside. It's a natural, perfectly, perfectly normal reaction to the horror of Nazi Germany. But when you talk about communist Russia, people don't feel that revulsion. They actually kind of laugh a little bit. You know, it's a little goofy communist, you know. And they were murdering people on a scale that made Hitler look like a piker. Why? Why is it that we feel this revulsion towards Nazis, an appropriate revulsion, and we don't feel it towards communists? And the reason is there are pictures of Nazi Germany. We have photos. We liberated those camps. We took thousands of pictures. We put the Germans on trial. The Germans put their own people on trial. I think it was 84,000 war criminals convicted within uh, 10 years of the end of the war that the Germans prosecuted on their own. This whole thing came to the surface. The Germans dealt with it and they got, they, they shed it. They, they shed the guilt of it by looking at it in this face. And we've seen the pictures of Nazi Germany. We know how horrible they are. There are essentially no pictures from the Gulag. But we 
we do have from the gulag are drawings. Now these drawings are the same thing as what actually happened. If we can look at some of these drawings, you'll see this is what happens in the gulag. Guards urinating on people's faces and so on, but it's a drawing. And all the rest of them that you're gonna see are just drawings. They don't have the emotional power. These pictures were drawn by an inmate of the gulag who is drawing from memory things that either happened to him or happened to the people around him. So there you go. Yeah, people shot in the back. There's no movies of this. There's no photographs of this. You have to go looking hard to find these drawings of what actually happened uh, with the Soviets in the Gulag. Oh, there's some um, convicts uh, executing one of the political prisoners. They put the political prisoners, you know, writers and musicians and scientists and all the rest, into prison with hardened criminals who absolutely terrorized them and, and, and the atrocities that went on in Soviet uh, prisons and, and the number of people that were shot in the basement of the Lubyanka, which still stands in the middle of Moscow. This building where l hundreds of thousands of people were killed is still standing. It's just open for business. This is why we don't feel this revulsion. And this is why these filmmakers on the left have to pick their villains. There's more villainy out there in socialism. You throw in 50 million people starved by Mao. We haven't seen any movies about that. Haven't seen any movies with the exception of The Last Emperor uh, that really talked about the, the, the massacre of the, um, of the Cultural Revolution. We got to see The Killing Fields, which is an amazing movie about what the communists did in Cambodia. But generally speaking, I think there's a movie made, The Way Home or The Long Walk Home, something like that, that is actually takes place in a gulag. But tens of millions of people were killed there. This is not to excuse the Nazis by any means. It's simply to say that when you have images and pictures, you're talking to people's emotions. You're not, you're not going through your head. You're not giving people a list, well, we know that happened in 1937 in Yezhov and, and, and Yagoda and Berry and all the rest of it. No, those are intellectual things. Pictures hit you right here. And that's why they're so powerful. And that's why the left has tried and continues to try to make you and me the villains in our own culture, the villains in our own mythology. We're the bad guys in our own world. And that's why stupid little movies like, Bic, uh, like um, Bushwick and bigger movies like Redacted and Syriana and Avatar are so dangerous. They are providing pictures to show the American people how evil the American people are. And if they're evil people and it's an evil society, then it's ripe to be overthrown, isn't it? And who could we call for that? That'll do it for this edition of the Hot Mike Show on NRA TV. I am Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.